putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Telling Fox News, our own Catherine Herridge, that the House Intelligence Committee is now asking Fusion GPS, that's the company behind the fake, phony, anti-Trump Russian dossier, to turn over records that allegedly show payments to journalists to publish stories. Wow. You talk about first Russia propaganda, Hillary, the DNC that she ran, she paid for it all. And then, of course, the group that used it, now they're saying, hey, let's pay the journalists. Now, keep in mind, the same company that they used to funnel $10 million or more through a third-party lawyer to create the dossier that used Russian sources to smear the president and try and influence the American people with phony Russian information to steal an election. And on the issue of so-called Trump-Russia collusion, tonight yet another prominent Democrat forced to admit a year later she has seen nothing to indicate there was any collusion between Donald Trump and the Russians. Here's Democrat, Senator, liberal, leftist, Dianne Feinstein. Have you seen any evidence that this dirt, these emails, were ever given to the Trump campaign? Not so far. Not so far. Have you ever seen, have you seen any communications uh, that suggested that the Trump campaign wanted them to release them through a different means, because obviously they were ultimately released by WikiLeaks. No, I have not. If the Democrats and the left-wing media in this country cared even a little bit about the truth, then they would stop spreading lies about President Trump. And now they should focus on real Russia collusion, real crime, real evidence, real impropriety. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. What a story, right? What a revelation. What if this turns out to be true? Leftist reporters taking bribes to report on, quote, Russian interference. Would you be shocked? You know, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked. I, quite frankly, find it very plausible that this happened. Think about how the left sold us on this. I mean, News report after news report, Russian collusion between the Trump campaign, Trump campaign, and there's nothing there. And Donald Trump's going, I've got nothing to do with him there. Yeah, but he does. And look at this. And there's another thing over here. And look over here. And he said Russia one time. It, it was to the point of ridiculous. And it, quite frankly, it remains that. I wonder if Mueller is aware that the, the possibility exists that Fusion GPS who has been contracted with by the DNC, the Clinton campaign, and even Obama. When I said on TV that Obama, this could lead back to Obama. Think about this. He paid this group of people to do what they call opposition research. We've moved now from opposition research to out and out conspiracy to influence an election, to influence the media. I want to see how they dig out of this rat hole. I don't know how you guys feel. Such is the way of the left. I wouldn't necessarily blame the left, uh, these reporters, for accepting bribes. Now you're going, Kevin, what are you talking about? No, I wouldn't. These leftist reporters were probably told, now look, we want to win this election. You're in the bag with us. Now we want to pay you to write stories about the Russian narrative. And they're like, you know, I mean, we are in the bag with you, but I mean, we feel bad. And they go, well, it's either that or, you know, you wake up, you know, you you don't wake up tomorrow because you've died from suicide. Two bullets to the back of the head. You know what? I think I'll take that money. (laughs) They may have been given a choice they couldn't refuse. I'm just saying, I'm not even joking about this. There may be people that go, you know what? My choice, I know if I were had done it, I'd be testifying for the FBI. I'd say, look, here's the deal. I could either not do it and be dead or feather my nest and still be alive and at least be able to tell you that they put the fear of you know, God in me. But I'm alive. At least I'm alive to testify because let me tell you, you don't play around with these people. I'd let them off the hook. I wouldn't let him off the hook ethically, but I'd let him off the hook in terms of I'm not going to charge you with criminal activity, but you can't be in, you know, you can't write anymore. <laughs> hope I hope they paid you enough. Anyway, according to the Washington Times, the roles of reporters is taking on added importance in federal court battles over the infamous Russia dossier that leveled unverified charges of collusion against the Donald Trump campaign. 
I'm really curious. I want to see how outnumbered Marie Harf handles this potential explosive news to learn that leftist reporters may very well have been faking the news of the Russian narrative in order to help Hillary Clinton get elected. What say you, Marie Harf? No, she's not going to become my new whipping boy. She would say, I find that sexist. <laughs> in the district, U.S. District Court in, in D.C., Fusion DPS, the dossier's financier via the Democratic Party and the Hillary Clinton campaign money, is fighting a House committee chairman's bid to find out if the opposition research firm paid journalists. Now, let me tell you something. Here's what I suspect. I'm just giving you a little bit of my own inside, you know, what's going on here. I suspect somebody tipped them off. Because we hadn't been talking about paying of journalists. We've been talking about who financed the dossier and why the, why are you keeping all this information private? Somebody tipped them off. This is the type of thing that you, I'm glad to see start to occur. Man. In U.S. District Court in Florida, a self-described dossier victim wants a judge to order the news website BuzzFeed, which published the dossier in full, to disclose who gave it to them. So there's two cases in district court where the left is going to have to fess up. They say this case, these cases underscore how a Moscow sourced memorandum created an opposition research against Donald Trump in the presidential campaign last year often dictates the debate about politics and the reporters rights in Washington. See, they crafted this debate. Now, let me give you a little tidbit of something that I'm thinking about doing. I had a, a guy send me a thing. He says, Kevin, think about this. They've orchestrated this Russia story. You think it's the first time it happened? So he sends me something. He says, remember when McCain ran against Obama? And people were wondering what what, what was the straw that broke? The, you're, you guys are probably too young. But the straw that broke the camel's back with McCain my, I'm talking about my producers. I'm not talking about you in the audience. You're probably too young. You you in the audience, you're like me. We're a little longer in the tooth. But McCain was said to have lost the election when the financial crisis occurred or supposed financial crisis. And McCain, the day before, had said something along the lines that we're doing fine. And then two days later, the cake hits the fan or did it. That was the question. So one of my buddies put together this connect the dots type thing, and we may end up posting it. It's a long post, but it's worth the read. But what he's the contention is, is that these guys have done this more than once. Now, why didn't this work? Why didn't the, the narrative of the Russians and the reporters are stacked against Donald Trump and they've asked for a special prosecutor, etc. Why didn't it work? I'm just giving you a second to think about it because you know the answer. The reason it didn't work is for the reason that I said, I don't know, 10 years ago, five years ago, eight years ago. I said, unless the Republicans get a candidate who's got no, no skin in the game, he, he doesn't have, he's not worried about you going after his personal life. He's not worried about his professional life. He's a guy that's willing to stand up and fight under whatever circumstances we will not win. And I'll be doggone. God went, you know what, KJ, you're on the right path there, broski. And we got Donald Trump fist pump to God. Boop, there we go. So that's what we needed, because the only way you're going to survive the gauntlet of the of political, the beast, the, the system that's in play is if you have somebody that says, I don't care. I don't care. I've told many candidates. Um, I talked to a candidate the other day who a different one. than I've talked about before brand new contacted me and I said, Hey, are you willing to just not apologize? Cause that's what it takes. The Democrats have enough to worry about, but I'm going to tell you some folks, this explains why Hillary Clinton deleted 33,000 emails, bleach bitted her hard drive, smashed her cell phones and lied before the FBI and Congress 
Fusion GPS needed to keep a lid on the activities. This is why we have to make FOIA requests in order to get any information out of these guys because they needed to keep a lid on this. This is a huge story, folks. This is big. Imagine if it turns out that CNN, Washington Post, uh, the New York Times, all these people have reporters who have been writing fake news in order to pr- to uh, to influence your thought process around Donald Trump. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.